Severe weather is only expected to intensify and ramp up over the next couple of days as we head through Tuesday, Wednesday, and beyond, with impacts from the plains to the southeast with a strong cold front bringing severe weather along it while moving across the country. In this video, I've got the details on the severe storms and everything else you need to know on the pattern ahead, so stick around. I appreciate you joining me here as always. Don't forget, if you enjoy the model maps that I use to predict the weather throughout my videos, you can check out the Weather Bell trial link down there in the description for a free trial there. As always, as well, hit that subscribe button. If you're new to my channel and you have not already for consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts delivered right to you by hitting the notification bell on that subscribe button, you can also get those forecasts as soon as I post them. You'll never miss one when I deliver them. But here we go. Let's look ahead to what we've got going on through the rest of this week. Starting here as we head towards Tuesday, May 21st of 2024. Another big severe weather outbreak possible here as we head towards Tuesday afternoon. What we're looking at here is during the morning. So right around sunrise, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, we're going to be watching some showers and storms over parts of Nebraska, South Dakota, likely into parts of Minnesota, Iowa, northern Missouri, and northern Illinois as well. While a few of these storms could possibly be on the stronger to severe side, especially moving out of Nebraska, heading towards Iowa and northern Missouri, we're probably not going to see the worst severe storms ramp up until at least the middle to the back half of the afternoon, and that's exactly what we're looking at here on the European model. We're really going to be pretty accurate as we're only, you know, within 24 hours at this point of this event, looking at the most intense storms likely from southern Minnesota, maybe stretching on back there to northeastern Oklahoma, with severe weather as we head late Tuesday and potentially through the evening rush. A lot of the worst storms will probably surge through Iowa as the sun goes down here, moving into parts of Wisconsin, Illinois, back down through Missouri, so places like Chicago, down to St. Louis, Missouri. Some of the impacts for those areas may be coming after sundown, so you want to make sure you have that severe weather action plan in place. Stay on top of timing by checking at sources like the National Weather Service at weather.gov. Know the lowest motion to your room of where you're going to be, whether you're going to get these storms during the daylight or into the evening and nighttime hours. Certainly something to keep track of. Now, the storms will briefly break on up as they progress towards parts of really eastern Illinois into Indiana and surrounding areas late Tuesday night heading into early Wednesday, May 22nd. But here we go, late Wednesday. Look at this. Along this cold front I just drew out for you here, at this point it is looking likely we're going to see storms refiring, meaning that we're going to have a new surge of some severe storms, maybe even a broad outbreak of some severe weather if this intensifies here from parts of New York all the way back down to northeastern Texas late Wednesday. Heading into Wednesday evening as well over these zones, so keep that in mind if you live even in Indiana, Ohio, some surrounding areas of the Ohio Valley region, through southern Missouri into parts of Arkansas, surrounding zones, all of these areas. Make sure you're aware of severe weather potential, not only Wednesday, but probably with these storms that fire back on up here as we go towards Thursday afternoon, because this front is going to be stalling on out. We're going to see a lot of energy sitting around over the same areas, so daytime in heating-induced thunderstorms will fire back on up over a lot of the same areas there as we head towards late Thursday, and in addition to that, over parts of Arkansas, northern Tennessee, and northern Mississippi, some of those zones where we get some of the refiring of those storms late Thursday. Look at where late Thursday heading into early Friday, May 24th, we actually get some additional storms possibly with this new low pressure over the northern plains. Out of Nebraska heading into Iowa, Kansas, we'll watch that there. And then it looks like everything's finally going to begin to sag towards the southeast coast of the United States with some scattered showers and mostly generalized thunderstorms from the looks of this picture at least as we head towards late Friday over some of those, these areas. But we'll have to watch and see if we can still get some isolated severe weather even as we head towards the end of the week. Now what's fueling all of these storms is what you can really tell from the mid-level jet stream here. We're looking at that 500 millibar level, which is 15 to 20,000 feet above people in America's heads. And you can see right here, this is a negatively tilted trough because it is going vertical. You can see how that curve goes straight to the north there once you get into the plains of those yellows, those oranges, and those reds. That's where we've got 50, 60, 70 knot winds, 15 to 20,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Those winds helping to propel a storm system on out and right in front of that trough in parts of Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, that's where that severe weather threat's going to peak late Tuesday. Now we're looking at Wednesday. Notice this trough still hanging out over a broad region, and that's going to really continue and slowly, slowly degrade as we head towards the end of the week, supporting severe weather threats really slowly moving south eastward from there, just like we were looking at in the overall picture there with the future radar. Now let's look at my ONW severe scale. We're going to use it multiple times here as we go throughout the rest of this video. Here's the explanation. You can see a one on my scale is low certainty, but a few severe storms appearing possible. Two to a three, you're starting to get into that isolated to maybe even scattered severe weather. Four to five, we're looking at scattered to even more widespread significant severe weather. Six and seven on my scale, that's the top of the scale with a very dangerous severe weather outbreak being expected. Keep those levels in mind here as we go day by day. Let's start with Tuesday. You can use the timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a different day. Starting with Tuesday, May 21st, 2024 here, an outbreak of severe weather appears likely late Tuesday over parts of the Midwest and upper Mississippi Valley. Intense damaging winds, large to very large hail, and the 
potential for a few tornadoes, some of them stronger as well, will drive the threats with a focal zone of more elevated hazards there, accompanying that level five of seven risk zone that I've got in eastern Iowa, northeastern Missouri, and northwestern Illinois. Now, keep in mind, really, if you live in any of the areas and at least the dark green heading into the yellows, you need to be on high alert for severe weather. So particularly from Oklahoma all the way on up there to Michigan, the severe threat looks elevated late on Tuesday. And this is in part due to this low-level jet stream. We looked at that mid-level jet stream just moments ago. Now looking here closer to the surface, just several thousand feet above um, people in America's heads as opposed to, you know, tens of thousands of feet. You can see right there into parts of Iowa, parts of Missouri, parts of Illinois, we've got this 50 to even 60 knot low-level jet stream kicking on up out of the south. That's going to help to combine with those westerlies in the upper levels and mid-levels of the atmosphere to really create some rotation, some spin in those clouds. That's going to help to produce the tornado potential and really just an overall elevated potential for supercells and strong storms is what that means. Here we go, dew points. If you get anything in the deeper yellows heading into the oranges, you're looking at dew points moving out of the 50s into the 60s. That is really conducive for severe weather. That's exactly what we're going to have. All models are showing it up here over the upper Midwest and upper Mississippi Valley late Tuesday. So that's a check in terms of ingredients. And one other thing we can look at here using more of a short range model like the HRRR here, on a 0 to 10 scale, there's a significant tornado parameter. And what this shows you is where this particular model thinks that all the ingredients are in place for intense tornadoes particularly. And you can see right there in southern parts of Iowa into northern parts of Missouri, it's looking like the biggest juice for tornadoes will be in place as we head 2, 3, 4 o'clock Tuesday afternoon. Does this mean there will be tornadoes there? Not necessarily, but it looks obviously like what we've been seeing here, that we're going to have all the other ingredients in place. So we probably will have some storms moving through, capable of producing those tornadoes, at least some of the storm energy progressing to the east along the front as the night goes on. Note that while there was higher energy back down there in the parts of Oklahoma, that will probably not be as significant just because of less storms being in that direction. Nonetheless, track the storms if you live in Oklahoma and Texas in case of a brief supercell with wind, hail, and maybe that tornado threat. Here we go. Let's skip ahead. We're looking at mid-afternoon on future radar here for our Tuesday. Really from eastern Nebraska, even all the way on over there into southern Wisconsin, we're going to be watching some of the storms left over from Monday evening and overnight, and then some of the new storms firing on up. Some big wind and hail looking like the main threats at this point in time, but maybe western Iowa, eastern Nebraska starting to develop some of the peak tornado threat for that region really looking like all of our hazards will begin to really converge and become more of a danger here as we head towards the middle of the evening. Right around the evening rush, you know, it's a Tuesday. We've got lots of people probably out at work trying to go about their everyday lives, and we're looking at storms really dangerous through central Iowa, the Des Moines area, according to this model anyway, pushing through 4, 5, 6 o'clock central time. You can see as we had 7, 8, 9 o'clock, this line of storms really converging. And once we get a little bit more of a line, this is when the threat's going to turn over to especially damaging winds. So through eastern Iowa, parts of Wisconsin, western Illinois, down through Missouri. While there will be a tornado threat, this line is going to be especially capable of the damaging winds and hail. Some of those gusts could even get in upwards of 70, 80 miles per hour, especially in the orange and red zones highlighted by the Storm Prediction Center. That's what the highlighting on your screen is right now. Once we get to the middle of the night here, Tuesday night, heading into early Wednesday morning now, again, that's when places like Chicago, back down through Bloomington, Springfield there in Illinois, that's when this model, this is just one model solution, things could change, but this particular model is showing that the storms will be moving through that area. Also on down there to south central Missouri, places like St. Louis there as well, getting the storms in the middle of the night. So again, make sure that you're weather aware, have a way to receive alerts. Does look like things will break up into the overnight hours. But again, we'll get that new round here as we head towards late Wednesday. And this is what we're looking at on my ONW severe scale with a corridor of isolated to, in some cases, scattered severe weather, likely Wednesday, especially from Texas to Ohio with a localized level three of seven in New York as well. So we've got that 307 from Northeast Texas to Central Ohio. Also got another pocket where I think some localized stronger storms will get going there to even some scattered severe storms in Northern Pennsylvania and Southern parts of New York. So that's what we'll be tracking there. We could see some elevated areas for tornado potential as well. And this is all going to be focused along the front. Here we go. Here's that front sagging southeastward. Notice that front, rather than being a little more vertically tilted, it is now kind of a little bit more horizontal. This is a sign that the overall feature is becoming a little broader. We're seeing some of that moisture spread out over a more vast area, but what that also means is more people getting in and at least the isolated scattered severe weather potential. So that's going to move from northeast Texas through Arkansas towards parts of the Ohio Valley where we're going to be really rich on moisture late Wednesday. 
even all the way on up there towards parts of New York, there will be some pretty decent moisture into the late day and into the evening hours as well. Notice there are also these localized pockets. This is that low-level jet stream showing us where we're going to have those pockets of, again, that southerly wind closer to the surface. Combining with those westerlies in the upper levels, that could increase that tornado threat. I think on down there towards Texas and Arkansas, that might be where we have to watch some of those lower-level winds bubbling on up and increasing the tornado threat a little bit more than in other areas. But we might see some local spots on up into the Ohio Valley and northeast as well. Not only Wednesday, but even towards Thursday, producing tornado potential and severe weather potential. Right now, we're not giving an ONW severe scale graphic here in this video for Thursday, but what you can see is that the most likely quarter of at least isolated severe weather stretches from the south central plains, the mid south, all the way in up there towards parts of the northeastern United States. That Let's look at the GFS model to kind of show you where this front is likely going to set on up late Thursday. And again, you can see, I think some of these storms in parts of the I-95 corridor there in the northeast from parts of Maine, even places like Portland, Maine, all the way back down there to the Jersey shoreline. Some of those are being underestimated here. Storm Prediction Center only has this area that I just circled highlighted right now anyway as I film this video late Monday for Thursday's severe weather potential. Again, I think other areas are going to fill on into the northeast, though, as this whole front is still going to be lingering around. The biggest chance for bigger storms, though, is obviously on down there where those storms form late Thursday, heading into early Friday. Not only they're in parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, and northern Louisiana, but we'll also have to watch these cells moving out of the north central plains whatever con kind of converges here over parts of Nebraska, Iowa, northern Kansas, late Thursday night heading into early Friday. Some of that could briefly be severe. I'm not too sold on it yet, though, because it is in the wake of that weaker but still existing front that's obviously hogging a lot of the moisture. By the time we head towards Friday, May 24th, and the late day, got an old mess just setting up here in a lot of the southeastern quadrant of the United States. We've got this new low that's formed then weakened over the north central United States, weakened thunderstorms in many areas from the nights before. It's going to be almost impossible to predict at the start of the week here as I'm filming this video exactly where severe weather will be out of that, but expect some isolated severe storms over a lot of that area I just had circled there on screen. Let's look at this as we head towards the upcoming next weekend. No, 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 no. We don't need more severe weather, but unfortunately it looks like we could see one more or two more systems before we finally get some cooler, drier air to filter in across the country. And man, you can really see exactly why storms are forming. I mean, look at this as we head towards Tuesday, May 21st. This is in the morning. This is your low temperatures to start the day. Starting the date with temperatures that could pass as highs with 60, 70, some of those breaking records to start the day there in parts of Oklahoma in those circled zones there on Tuesday morning as we head towards Tuesday afternoon. Look at these 80s. I mean, it's going to be a lot of 80s up here and supporting that severe weather threat, especially there. Remember, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, that's the focal point of our Tuesday severe weather threat, especially there in western Illinois into the St. Louis metro area there of Missouri, mid 80s into the upper 80s, even near the low 90s. That could break records in some cases here. Just a broad area of a lot of upper 80s and some 90s the further southwest you go in this area I just circled on screen. Even we could in, in some parts of southern and central New York, places like Albany into northern Pennsylvania as well. We could break some records with not only daytime highs Tuesday, but morning lows as we head towards Wednesday morning. You can see over parts of the Ohio Valley, lots of 60s and 70s there. Moist air mass in place. Severe weather as we head towards Wednesday afternoon as this front continues to sag southeastward. There we go. From Michigan back down to Oklahoma Wednesday afternoon, you can see these 80s south of the line, 70s back northwest of the line. So it's not an intense cold front. Again, I'm telling you, this thing is really turning horizontal, flattening out, broadening out, and weakening as the week goes on here. Unfortunately, still, these 80s, 90s south of the front continuing to support severe weather as the week goes on as well. We'll have local pockets in those areas I circled of Texas, Florida, back over to Arizona, Nevada, Southern Nevada, I should say, where we'll have those 90s continuing as well as the week goes on. Over here in the northeastern parts of the United States, more record-breaking warm lows to start the day Thursday. As we head towards Thursday afternoon, you know, again, a lot of the 80s are more confined down here to parts of the southeastern United States, but a lot of the Carolinas, Georgia, the Gulf Coast states, especially getting into the 90s with mugginess in the afternoon. Note that that little round of severe weather that'll try to get going in the north central plains won't have too much to work with here late Thursday heading into early Friday, but at least some 70s trying to creep northward with maybe some low 80s in parts of Kansas if the storms form there. Again, late week severe weather is pretty uncertain right now, but it looks like we'll have a big warm bubble in the southeastern quadrant as of the country as we head towards Friday. More 60s, 70s, even some new 80s beginning to return as far north as the Midwest by Friday afternoon. And again, the re quick return of these warmer temperatures and the 90s already starting to bubble back north or here towards Friday. That really indicates to me that we could at least see a couple more stronger storm systems with dangerous May severe weather before the month closes out. 
The 6 to 10 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center runs from the 26th through the 30th of May. Looks like we'll probably have a front from the Great Lakes down to the Kansas area around that time especially spreading south, uh, southeastward from there, bringing the warmer air closer to the east and Gulf Coast. Based on that and this precipitation map here for the 6 to 10 day range showing above average precip in the Gulf and East Coast region, it is looking like we're probably going to be seeing another front with severe weather push from at least the Midwest, the Plains, eastward, and towards those coastlines as we head towards the end of the upcoming weekend and into early and the mid part of next week. So if you want to stick with me in this hectic weather pattern, hit that subscribe button. That's it for this video. Stay safe out there, everyone.